Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy, and we're here today with Graham Coxon. Hello. How you doing, Graham? You good? Really great. Is this your man cave you're in right now? It, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a room where I do sort of stuff. Looks cozy. Nice skylight there. It's small, easy to manage. Um, and I am um, sound wise, you know, it's uh, it's where I just record and demo and hang out and just sort of lie on the floor sometimes. <laughs> just in the fetal position. <laughs> yeah. Would it be fair to say that you've been pretty busy and constantly working throughout the pandemic with the really ambitious project Super State about to arrive? Yeah, I've been working on that. Um, for a long, for a number of years, really, in the background of other things like some soundtrack stuff. So, what is it, four, four years or something? Although it was finished easily about two years ago. So, uh, it's been sitting around waiting for the right sort of aesthetic -y presentation, sort of, uh, et cetera. And when I've got some time and headspace um, to get it out there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's been a number of things. Uh, there seems to be a lot a lot of work. I don't think I've had as much as this ever. Well, so you've always been heavily involved in, in the art world. What can you tell us about how this collaboration came about and the origins of Superstate? I think I've, I've been heavily involved in my own kind of, uh, in how I used art for myself, you know, since a, since I was, I was a kid. Um, I don't think I've ever, the art world, I'm not sure would be that fond of me. I don't think <laughs> it's conceptual enough or, or clever enough or it's never been a sort of a career path, I don't think. But but the whole thing with these songs is that they started to tell some sort of a story and, and each song seemed to be a different sort of a, a scenario within a grouping of sort of kitchen sink dramas that were slightly unusual in the fact that they, they had a lot to do with um, science fiction and I'd read and, and my own sort of sort of idea of um, sort of ecstasy and visitation and what it all means and 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 and, and what um heaven is really and, and and things like that and um so the stories seem to come out of the songs at the same time and this over time built a long story in my head that was like a netflix series or a film and and really i just thought well drawing this stuff is going to be a lot e easier and, and and cheaper than trying to get people together to make a movie so it was a way of getting over quickly and easily the visuals or, or 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 roughly the sort of visuals that were coming into my head and to present them alongside the the album. Um, I had to study up a little bit on graphic artists and things like that because, you know, I've had a bunch of books, really. It's not something I've explored hugely. I, I had a lot of sort of manga stuff and obviously watched Akira quite a lot and I got into a lot of films, anime films and other comic books and things like Stray Bullets and, and, and the other stuff like that. But I've never been megaly into it. I just kind of liked some of the drawing and I liked that it was sort of, it was sort of instant, a bit like TV. <laughs> you know, and you, you could really take in a lot of the creativity or you could just not think very much about it and just download the info from the page pretty quickly. Um, so we went through a lot of people who drew graphic stuff, um, comic books and, um, and sort of chose them for each episode stroke song. So really the LP was, was as I was making that, that the album, the, the sort of story was, was coming alongside it. And then, and then I wanted to expand on, on the story and make it into something that was a little more like a series of episodes. So I was, I was going to ask if it was, a, if you were pulling different muscles when it came to kind of taking this story and turning it into what might be considered as kind of traditional pop songs but was it all just part of the same package in your mind really sort of it doesn't have to be i mean the um songs do it anyway i think songs are expressing some sort of emotion or telling some sort of a story um it's just that i think i've liked working in clusters of songs that 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 are sort of that relate um, not necessarily sort of concept albums but things that do have a, um, I guess, a, a brief, I find an album, I mean, I could put out an album of acoustic songs that I've piled up, you know, um, but they wouldn't really, really relate to each other. It would be one of those sorts of things that 
that are rarities or or you know this these hidden gems or or whatever they're called um compilations yeah compilations of bits and bobs it wouldn't really be an album in the way that i think of albums and which is probably quite old-fashioned really that they have a that, um, that they have a sort of a focus although they can be very different that they're, they're sort of united in a in a in, in a direction in a focus towards something i suppose i've done that before with um spinning top and stuff like that and i've done and i've not done it before um sort of like with my golden d album that was kind of more more like a scattergun so we've got 15 graphic stories with 15 unique songs to tell the stories and it's a story of a dystopian world where <laughs> here we go where angels and villains alike promise people paradise we have government mandated digital dreamscapes and kind of robot partners for everyone what can you tell us about kind of the arc of the story and would you say there's anything about it that kind of speaks to the world we're living in today well it's the same it basically is kind of like this world now but slightly advanced slightly amplified um slightly more in line of my own sort of um neurosis about it really about where it could be very quickly and you know as we're told on the news 50 years and we're fucked and um, <laughs> you know it's and it's kind of kind of slightly scary what does that world look like you know a few decades down the road is it a bit like what super state is <clears throat> how does man adapt um does man go to other planets and sit there missing trees the earth trees and the trees of essex and England and <laughs> france and, and architecture and things like that um, you know, I, I do like the familiar, even with my own my own stuff. You know, I've got a lot of the, the stuff that in, that sort of tells me who I am and who I have been in my life. So I, I suppose I was struggling with that idea, and the idea of um, I like the idea of being visited. So so I suppose there's some down at heel um, who are being visited by you know some sort of angelic beings or whatever like that. Not always a pretty angel, you know. Sort of, they've been rather uh, influenced by Old Testament angels, so quite fiery and freaky looking. And obviously, this is kind of confusing people. There's some extremely, extremely rich people who who um, who are all crooked, of course. And um, and uh, I, I, you you sort of space travel as a sort of playground, and, and <laughs> there's a lot of sort of um, um, fantasy sort of um, activity. Um, and also, I suppose reproduction is is all messed up. You don't really reproduce. You're you're fed and fed and given the news via tubes in your into your body and things like that. And and there are sort of robot, more like robot relationships to stop the kids from copulating. And um, I had a, a, a sort of an idea that the kids were sort of were given sort of drugs, really, a sort of a futuristic bromide. And a lot of the kids have, have, have gone have gone feral and formed their own kind of uh, um, groups. I suppose there's influences from all over, from 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 the Children of the Corn, from Brian Aldiss novels, um, and just my own my own thing. Really, fifth dimension. I mean, I I, I am a bit of a science fiction f freak. Would it be safe to assume that you'd rather we sort our own shit out? And I would I would it, rather than say saving up for a package Richard Blant Branson fly into outer space because you've got Jeff Bezos claiming that we can just move all industry to the moon and then everything will be fine. Well, it would be nice to sort out a few things. It would be nice <laughs> to, 20 years ago, say, you know, not have um, spent trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars on on war and, you know, on, on a sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, how many goddamn, you know, how many sort of military vehicles that are really causing a lot of problems and um, farting cows. 20 years ago, we could have done, took a different turn. And those trillions and trillions of dollars could have, you know, given, you know, a sort of NHS worldwide, etc. Could have done something about how we, how we power everything up. Could have done a lot, an awful lot with it. That there, there is never really a decision and the decision is never going to be an easy one to just stop doing that. Um, no one's going to do it. No one really has quite the guts. In, in light of everything you said, it just seems strange that we're in a world now where those quite simple solutions have been turned down and somehow moving everyone into outer space has somehow been viewed as an easier option. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if the, if the money is there, people should... I mean, it's like, it's like a classic doing a classic geographic, you know? Uh, 
you should want what you have, what you have, and not what you think you should be striving for. You know, and of course, we should. This planet is incredible. Mm. You know, everyone, it's, it's 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 such an amazing place. Why go to friggin' Mars? It's ugly, and <laughs> and the moon. It hasn't got anywhere near the kind of cool shit that Earth's got. And uh, what can you tell us about the kind of the sounds that you were um, you were drawing from from this record? Cause it is it's ultimately also, it's also an album full of bangers like Uncle Sam, The Ball of Light, I Don't Want to Wait. Yeah. I've written Prince at a Sci-Fi Rave. <laughs> Those are my uh, notes on the back of a fag packet notes. How how would you describe kind of the sound and the sonic world of, of Superstate? Well, it was good because I, after I've been working, started working on it, and then I did End of the Fucking World and other soundtracks and things, I realised I was getting a little better at recording myself. I didn't really have a recording setup, so this meant I could spend 14, 16 hours a day if I liked getting, you know, playing this, having a MIDI keyboard, messing around with synths, messing around with sort of disco beats you know, putting loops in and then and then forming melodies over the top and then structuring. And I found it it was just opened up a whole world that I should have done it years ago. But it just coincided four or five years ago with me getting, you know, logic or whatever and a few preamps and things like that and realizing how simple this can be and then getting a little better at it. So so I, I had a lot more sounds at my disposal, a lot more conveniently. It's a little bit more like digital painting, you know, I, I find that extremely convenient and you don't have to get your crappy overalls on get all your paintbrushes out stink of turps and make a mess on the floor you know it's kind of a little easier so uh, it was it was kind of a bit like that um it, it was it was just great for, for for my creativity and um i was sort of exploring my my love of um i suppose prog you know and and also disco so 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 it's sort of a bit like a sort of king crimson and sly and the family stone Sort of mashed together with with other bits and, and and bobs, and I wanted to create characters. Um, a lot of characters, um, different women characters, obviously uh, voices that were a little more on the angelic side, and then stronger voices that were sort of more to do with the, the character of Mother Universe, etc., and things like that. So I like the idea that there was different types of characters voices within it and not just my own i mean i'm singing on pretty much all of it but i'm not the lead vocalist on many songs i don't think i mean i'm mostly it's dual female and male voice which i i kind of like so yeah so it, it sounds very different it's not finger style guitar sort of country bluesy stuff and and, and it's not sort of particularly <laughs> oldie uh, oldie indie either it's 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 something it's something else it's kind of bringing in a lot of the other passions that, that i have that, around sort of prog rock funk and disco and, and and things like that really just wanted to really unlimit myself and, and and i think and i think learning a kind of a good skill for me was to singing a singing a different character and, and i found it a lot easier for me to say stuff that I wouldn't ordinarily say as Graham Cox and all singing the style of somebody that I couldn't really do it as Graham Coxon. I don't know why why it has to had to be that way, but I find Graham Coxon and singing as him as a, a little bit of a, he's a bit of a pol apologetic and a, a bit shy to really get get to some of the subject matter that he he wants to sing about. So I had to pretend to be someone else to do that. And um, we also we spoke to Damon recently, and he said that there had been some discussions around a potential idea for what a Blur reunion might have in the store, but nothing was concrete. Just wonder, were you privy to those discussions? Is that something you hunger for, or are you busy enough? <laughs> um, yeah, I was privy to that discussion, and it started as a, as a discussion. It didn't really end as one. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> I was. Yeah, I was there. Is that something you hunger for? Or have you got enough on your plate at the moment? Well, um, I, I mean, it, it's uh, having a lot on your plate is a sort of is a sort of chaos. I, I suppose if someone's, you know, it's like a massive English breakfast at the moment. If someone's snuck on a kind of a grilled tomato. I, I probably wouldn't notice. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm sort of up, 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 up for it. If, if everyone digs the idea, you know, um, I, I think a lot of people have just have just decided really in, in, in some sort of a way that that they, that they were living life in a really strange way that wasn't actually suiting them very well and and, and then chopped away a lot of the stuff that they don't need. And, I, and, and I've been trying to trying to do that a, a little bit. So 
And I think that's always been the thing with Blur, that they, they, they'll do it when they really need to, and not really for any other reason. It doesn't really seem um, genuine to just get back together and do gigs just for a bit of spondage. Mm. Um, you know, we, we need to have some sort of a focus for why we would work, like I suppose. So. I mean, what is next for you? Do you imagine, I mean, you've, you've superstate is a bit already a multifaceted project and it, it feels a bit it feels a bit insulting to ask like would you take it on tour or is it would, would that be too much of a headache would you tour super state or are you going to do some soundtrack stuff i mean what, what do you think to next? yeah i mean i there's other things going on you know there's still jaded hearts and i found myself in duran duran and that's a good <laughs> uh, the most surreal good fun i've had for a long time and um and i'm like why not you know 30 years ago that, that the world was different and but but now it's like if it's fun why, why should i care you know um it's it is it is fun and i'm doing there's a couple of other things that i've been working on this year as well which which i'm really excited about which we might catch a glimpse of later on down down the year or early next year which is really lovely and um but i i, I don't really know what else to do? Um, yeah, my my head is in a mess. There's all, but I'm just going on and um, hoping that the weeks I can give energy to everything I'm involved with as the weeks tick by. Because it, you know, it, yeah, it has, has been a little bit of a nutsy 18 months since last April. You know, I came back from Los Angeles in, in during this the, the pandemic pandemic and got myself back into North London. And it's been an unusual time in good and very, in really, really good ways and in really bad ways. And so we'll just have to see how it all settles. I feel like I'm going through an asteroid belt, you know, in Star Wars, that bit. It was always my favourite bit. That bit. Yeah, that's sort of what life feels like. Some of them are sort of hitting the cockpit a bit, but mostly I'm getting through. Amazing. Which is an amazing note to end on. Graham, thank you so much for your time. Um, Pleasure.